Welcome to Electron Online. Our next example is kind of the same as the previous example with one difference. We have the same capacitors, two and th three microfarads, the same charge on each, 40 and 100 microcoulombs. But in this case, we're going to connect them, the positive end of one to the negative end of the other. In the previous example, when we connect the positive to positive, the total charge distributed over the two capacitors at the end when they're connected is going to be the total of the two charges we started with. But if you're connecting them positive to negative, then the total charge that will be distributed over the two capacitors when they reach steady state is going to be the difference between these two. And the reason for that is when you look over here, notice that four of these charges, and again, the, the way I've drawn it out is that each plus and each negative really represents 10 microcoulombs on this chart. So what's going to happen is that these four positive charges are going to be moving down the wire to the other capacitor and negate these four negative charges. And then when those are gone, these four positive charges are going to be moving down the circuit in this direction, this direction to negate four of these negative charges so at the intermediate state, you'll have zero charge on this, this capacitor and only 60 microcoulombs left on that one. Of course, those 60 microcoulombs are not going to stay there. They're going to redistribute themselves across both of these capacitors. But this means then that the total charge that you end up with is going to be the difference of the two that you started with. In this case, Q2 minus Q1, and so that would be 100 microcoulombs minus 40 microcoulombs, which is equal to 60 microcoulombs. That will be the total charge remaining after these, some of these charges have negated these charges, and then the remainder will redistribute themselves across the two capacitors. What you'll end up with at the end is something that looks like this. You'll have a capacitor here, capacitor there, connect it, like so, and so some of these charges will move over in this direction. You'll end up with six of these and six of those. And one of those will come down, move it over the other direction, put a positive one there. They'll push a positive one away, make this negative, and a positive charge will move in this direction and negate one of these. And this will continue until equilibrium is reached. That means you're going to have a voltage across this one here, voltage one, negative and positive, voltage two, negative and positive. And again, using Kirchhoff's rules, as we go all the way around the circuit, we know starting from here, minus V1 plus V2 equals zero, or V1 equals V2. Using the definition of capacitance over here, that's the definition, we solve for V, we get it as a ratio Q divided by C, which means that Q1 over C1 must equal Q2 over C2, Q1 and Q2 being the final charges on the two capacitors. So my notation is that if you see a big Q, it's the initial charge, small Q is the final charge. And of course, since we know what C1 and C2 is equal to, coming up here, we can write that Q1 divided by 2 is equal to Q2 divided by 3. All right, now I need an equation that establishes the relationship between Q1 and Q2 in some other way. Well, let's see here. What I can say is that Q2 is going to be equal the charge that it started with which is Q2, big Q2, minus the charge that migrated to C1. Hmm, how much charge did migrate over there? Well, let's see here. I think I'm going to try it just a little bit different. It might be just better to look at it this way. We know how much charge is left after part of the charge is migrated. That's how much left to distribute between the two. So what I can say here is that Q2, is equal to the charge that it started with, which is 60, that's the remainder of the charge, minus Q1, the charge that went to C1. That's probably an easier way to do it. Since we already took care of the fact that if we connect them, positive to negative, that some of the charges will 
negate the charges over here. The remainder is going to be the difference between the two. And so now we have two relationships. We have this one right here from the voltage equation, and we have this one right here by realizing that charge has gone from one to the other. If we now replace Q2 by that quantity right there, we have Q1 divided by 2 is equal to Q2, which is 60 minus Q1 divided by 3. Now cross multiplying, we get 3Q1 is equal to 120 minus 2Q1. Moving that across over here, 5Q1 is equal to 120, or I can say that Q1 is equal to 120 divided by 5, or 24 microcoulombs. So now we have Q1. To find Q2, we take this equation right here. Q2 is equal to 60 minus Q1, which is equal to 60 minus 24, Therefore, Q2 is equal to, hmm, how about 36 microcoulombs, and both of them added together add up to the 60. And that's how we find the charge on each when we connect the positive to the negative end of those two capacitors. And that's how it's done.